Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we're gonna talk about the things no one tells you when they're telling you to save seeds. Okay, everyone, so I know that everybody is hearing all the time, you need to save seeds, you need to save seeds, you need to save seeds. And yes, you do need to save seeds. But I feel like no one's telling you what to expect <laughs> that's going to happen when you go to save seeds. Because if you don't really know what's going on with the plant and why it's doing the certain things that it's doing, it can kind of be like a really freaky situation where you end up harming the plant and harming the plants around you trying to make sure that you can save seeds. So I'm gonna show you guys my okra plant. My heavy hitter okra is the one that is going to be, uh, that we're gonna be saving seeds from. I have one of them that did amazing. And so that's the one I picked, singled it out, and it is growing to save seeds. But there are some crazy things going on with it. But before I show you guys the plant, let's say a big thank you to the following for joining our seed swap. All right, guys, so for those of you guys that have asked, yes, we will have another seed swap. It will be for the um, summertime, and I don't have the exact date on that one yet of when it's going to start, but it will be starting in probably like a month or so. I typically like to see which seeds that I'm gonna be saving from my garden and how many I have to share before I announce what's going to be like the uh, Team Benson Desert Garden Seed that is coming out of my garden. All right, guys, so here we have the uh, okra plant. And as you can see, this is the one we are focusing on. This one is our oldest ochre plant. This one has done its job and we want these seeds. Now the aphids are on this one. These are woolly aphids on here. As you guys can see, they have like a little bit of a woolly texture. And what they're doing is they're eating the plant. So if you look at like these older leaves, they're attacking these older leaves and they're killing the leaves. This is what the plant wants. The plant wants to focus all of its energy on putting into making good viable seeds so that it can reproduce itself. So it is having the woolly aphids basically eat all of the leaves back. Now, are we concerned about them attacking these other ones? No, we are not, especially these ones because these ones are brand new, nice and healthy. If you look on here, you do see white spots, but these white spots are actually sun skull. These aren't woolly aphids. As you can see, I'm scratching at it and it's not falling off because it's just sun skull on the plant. And that is because we have officially removed the shade cloth because the banana or butternut squash is doing its job. Now this one is going to be the next one to go out, but as you can see, the aphids are still not attacking it yet because the plant is perfectly fine with growing some more okra. Now for those of you guys that saw this one earlier, and a couple more videos ago, this one had a grasshopper on it that was eating the grass, that was eating the leaves. And basically that grasshopper tricked the plant into thinking that it was dying and the plant decided to throw off some okra pods. It wasn't producing before that. So I want you guys to really look at your plants and really decide what those bugs are doing for your plants because they are doing something special for them. So we are going to start to prune this one right here just to give it a little bit more focus on making those pods there nice and full of seeds that we can use i have on my farmer's defense sleeves if you guys have not seen these i will link them down below we do have a promo code for 10 percent off but basically they protect my skin because everything about this okra plant is itchy and so this will help me from not being able to be itchy later on so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna prune up some of these leaves. Um, we are also not going to throw these leaves away. We're gonna put these leaves in the uh, bed that we are trying to get better soil in and we're gonna use them as worm food. So one thing I'm gonna point out guys is that um, this okra plant is trying to put off new stems and usually 
what happens when it is getting past its prime and it doesn't have any more growth at the top so that's as far as this one's gonna go those are the last ones that this this stem right here can possibly make so it puts off these new growth nodes because it also wants to make sure that it can have the seed so as you can see this one was a growth node too as well and it has made one that we are letting go to seed too as well and then it has another one on here that we are letting go to seed these ochre pods when they come off of these side um, branches like this it basically is like the plant just putting it's like hell mary out there <laughs> like it's like okay it's the last one we can do so let's just make it make seed so these ochre pods are a lot tougher than if you were to eat some of these ochre plot pods even when they're super small so what we're going to do is we want the plant just to focus on these four and i think that those four will give us enough seed to be able to share and to be able to have for next year so we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut off any type of growth node like this all right guys and there we have it now i left the top little canopy of leaves and that is just so that the plant can still stay alive and photosynthesize and still be able to provide energy to making these seeds we are just focusing on the seeds so i just went ahead and cut back everything actually missed a little spot with some okra trying to come up there so we'll probably just leave that and see what it does see if it'll make us another pod that we can save seeds from now i also opened up this entire canopy down here one of the important things that people forget is that your soil needs to sterilize itself how you control bug populations and different things like that in your soil is you uh, allow it to be able to see the sunlight guys so this entire area has not seen the sunlight because it has been blocked by all of these big leaves so uh, there's probably a higher population of like bugs down here there's also probably a higher population of fungi down here too as well as you can see some of like the dirt has like the white um, mycelia on it so I want this area to get to get sterilized a little bit before I add things like my broccoli so all we do is we do it slowly but surely this is the one that we are saving because it had the best production and these are seeds that we actually use from last year this one we're not saving so as soon as this one um, finishes giving me all the okra it's going to give me i'm just going to rip the plant out and then that's going to leave this whole area to be able to sterilize so before the uh, the butternut you see that there's a space right here so before the butternut covers the whole entire sun <laughs> to this area i want to make sure that i have this space sterilized because this is going to be the first space that gets the broccoli so that's what it looks like. Now we'll just continue to let the woolly aphids do their job and continue to let the plant make seed. It's gonna focus a lot of energy on making those seeds nice and healthy and full of all of its great DNA because now it really thinks it's dying. Guys, we have Frank over here. He is so interested in what I'm doing. I did throw a couple of like the deader leaves down there for him and he was down there eating some of the aphids off of it. But he's so interested right now. All right guys, so that is what it looks like, as you can see. Um, I wanna really hone in on why I picked this one um, to save seeds from. So when it came to my okras, I had the two that were that came up first, and then these two are the later ones, and then I had some ones in the pot, in a pot. Um, I picked these two, or this one, because out of these two, that one performed the best. They were all the same seed, which is seed that I saved from last year, and basically I am just narrowing it down what, to what is going to be the best seed that I can possibly save. So when you look at your plants, you don't just want to save seed from all of them because if some of them didn't do well or something was funky about it or weird about it, you don't want to save the genetics from that plant. So the one that was over here, the farthest one, it's growing a lot of okra right now, but it bushed out really weird. It just wasn't compatible really for my garden for what I want. So I don't want to bring the genetics of that plant back into my garden. I'd rather do this one, which just grew straight up, grew a ton of okra, and then grew a little few of the offshoots in order to be able to have itself 
have more seed for the plant to reproduce. So that is why I picked that one. But, you know, when it comes to you guys' garden, you're gonna know your garden best. So look at your garden, see what your garden is providing for you and see what you think is going to be the best thing for yourself later on. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up of what happens when you go to save seeds because I feel like nobody's really talking about that and it can be a scary moment. A lot of people would have blasted that plant with a lot of um, neem oil or diatomaceous earth or they would have treated all the plants around it and all those different things like that and that's not what you need to do guys. Let your, let your garden be organic, let it be beautiful, and let nature take care of nature. And if you are just there being supportive to your garden, then nature will also take care of you. So I hope that this video helps. I hope it gives you guys an insight of just how it's gonna be when you save seeds. And until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys.